Yep. Well, today we're here with Valentina and welcome Valentina. And, and Valentina's in uh, Australia and uh, we're very excited to have her join us. Uh, Valentina is one of Nat's uh, favorite practitioners actually mm -hmm. from around the world. And um, she was thinking about um, bringing her on to go through one of the um, uh, well, sessions that, that you'd done, if, that she'd watched you do. Well, some of you might remember about, I think it was about six months ago, I got incredibly excited because I watched one of Valentina's um, videos and I think it was about man manifesting, I think. And uh, it, was, it was about the, the way that we speak and the words that we say and how the universe is listening to everything that we're saying. And when we say something negative, the universe kind of drops out. And so I got incredibly excited with everybody and I kept running out of the studio and coming back in with a piece of paper and saying, look, if you say it like this, <laughs> this, this and this, this is what's going to happen. So I'm sure that there are people that are going to remember this. So I thought I'm going to find now, Valentina now exactly. and I'm going to bring her onto the program so she can explain it to you. So, so first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. So everyone knows who you are. Hi. Yes. Look, um, I am Valentina Srpchanska is the last name. I'm a Australian-born Macedonian woman. So I am also a massage therapist, remedial massage therapist for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I've also been an energy healer since around the mid nineties, 1995. I did some Reiki programs then, blew my head apart, didn't know what to do with myself. So I became a massage therapist to ground that energy. Mm -hmm. And I've been practicing ever since. It's been my full-time job for the whole time until all of this happened. And uh, we've been instructed not to massage, but I have been doing online healing programs for women mm -hmm. uh, called Heal Her Through My Facebook groups and it's been really amazing to to connect on a different level more mental health more emotional and spiritual health distantly so uh, that's what I've been doing for the last 25 years mainly in Perfect. Melbourne but yeah and and so you're and you're based in Melbourne now because because how we met was because you came to Barcelona and worked with us for a little while which is very exciting how long ago was that that you came to us that was 2011 Okay. Wow. It's already. So that was nine, nine years nine ago. Years. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Gee, we, um, we keep every we keep having chats with people and thinking, oh my god, it's ten years or it's nine years. It's amazing how quickly that time goes. Wow. I thought it was like five yeah. years ago. Yeah. I know. Just blink and it's gone. But um, exactly. yeah, I was uh, put in touch with you through a mutual friend that knew of you mm -hmm. and said, oh, there's some amazing Australian women running this really you know amazing pilates studio because i said oh i'd really like to experience working overseas and i wonder you know who'd like a massage therapist people say there's 30 percent unemployment here you never stand a chance i said forget it man i'm a good manifesto i'm going to manifest this stuff <laughs> uh -huh. and then i think five days later i met you at your i think it was a five-year anniversary of your clinic About opening business. it was a barbecue it, 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 we, we we would have been in the center this month 11 years so we, we, we actually... What well, was um, it? A barbecue? We had a barbecue. I think that you had some barbecue yeah, going on outside. I really remember the kangaroo. We, we did. We, <laughs> had a, we did. We had a kangaroo. We had, well, it's very true. We did. We had kangaroo barbecue for our, oh. for our fifth anniversary. That's so true. Yeah. I oh, think well, that, was 20, that was 2011. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, huh? Amazing how time flies. When yeah. So, so I know. And so that's interesting. So you've been massaging for 25 years. It's a long time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's a and long I'm time, but I love it. And I also didn't realize you've been doing the energy work from the 90s. You started energy work yeah, then. when I was 25. Yeah. I was, look, as a Macedonian, um, you know, uh, first generation Australian, my parents were quite religious but within the macedonian religion they accept uh like a ritual spiritual healers and mm -hmm. people like that so if there's anything wrong with the kids they go off to the spiritual healer first then they go to the doctor if they can't fix it That's really yeah. so as a child i was really wide-eyed about that really enjoyed learning about that um from exper experiencing the healing 
But as I get old, as I got older in my teens, of course, you know, you become rebellious as you do in a teenager. And I just rejected the whole uh, Macedonian culture and everything left with that. And then in my early 20s, I met someone who was a Reiki practitioner and she kind of got me thinking about it. I also had a friend who was doing massage and Qigong type of energy healing for uh, his clients and I was one of them and I got really I got really sucked into the whole energy world in a beautiful way like I found such great relief in my mind my emotions my body and I just thought I want to do that so that's what I that's how I ended up going back into it just opening my mind back into it but there was a long period of time when I didn't do anything you know didn't even want to know about it yeah, but I think sometimes because I'm an energy worker as well, and I think we have those moments in our life where we're completely like, or we think we're blocked to it, but we're actually not. We've got lots of stuff still coming at us, but we're just a little bit like, no, I'm not ready to, just not ready to look at that right now. And then all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, now I am. Yeah, and I think also... Open next, sesame. Um, yeah, and I think even in the last five years for us, um, in, our, in our studio, in our centre, and with our practitioners, there's been a real um, emergence of all of these practices coming together, whether it be holistic physiotherapy, so, you know, really traditional, uh, t traditional Chinese medicine, and then the energy work all coming together. And I think the thing is we've got, with, as you become a, a world-experienced practitioner, you can't help but find, and this is what we talk about, I talk about a lot with our practitioners, is that they find these really beautiful toolboxes of different practices that they that they know work really well for them to be able to heal people, whether it be uh, on a physical level, emotional level, or a spiritual level. You know, they are connected, and it's how we actually work. I with mean, them. that's something that we do. I mean, a lot of our clients, when they start, they'll come with me for their first session, unless they're specifically going to see another practitioner. And then from that first session, then I'll be like, right, okay, so I think you need to do. Pilates because you've got a back injury or no actually I think you need to start with a series of Reiki sessions because I think the blockages are more emotional and it's I mean I know as a Pilates practitioner when I discovered Reiki um, it completely changed it com completely changed the way I was teaching Pilates because what I realized was every time I was putting my hands on my clients before I'd done the Reiki I was putting my hands on and healing them without realizing what I was doing and then once I did my Reiki and had all of my channels opened up, I realized that what I was doing before, I was now doing with just like this extra like power, power source behind my hands. And every time I'm touching my clients in Pilates, I'm giving them Reiki. Yeah. And I think the thing is you don't have to believe in these things. And that's something that we, I'd like to like, this is why I'm, I'm excited about what we're going to do today, because I think even if you're not, uh, energetic or spiritual uh, that you that you want to actually say that that's what you are if you, if you if that's not I think we all are ultimately that we are all energy um, but some people really don't feel comfortable with actually using those words um, and I think that but but we all speak and we all actually manifest through what comes out of our mouths and and I think that having that um, that it power to actually know that what, what you're saying and what you're thinking actually is what will be um, is really, really important. And I think that it would be a beautiful thing for you to show what you, what Nat got so excited about um, when she watched, when she watched your, your workshop, she was, she just came to me, she said, I've just, Valentina's has just opened something for me that's really special and I want to share it with everybody. And so, um, so that's what you're going to do for us today. You're going to share it with them. So, yeah, I will. So, so tell us a little bit about what, what it is that you, what you're going to do, what, how, what it is that you're going to show everyone. So I want to talk about how, uh, our feelings and our beliefs and our words all come together to create a reality. Whether that reality, you see it as an energetic reality or as a, as a physical reality, it's still your reality. Mm -hmm. The way you feel about something is your world, mm -hmm. isn't it? So if I'm, like anything could be going on outside, but the way I experience it in my mind is my choice. Mm -hmm. So with these sorts of words, um, and we call low vibration. So everything has a vibration, you know. In physics, we know that everything is vibrating at different frequencies. Some are high frequencies, some are low frequencies. Colors are certain frequencies. 
sounds a certain frequency, some things you can see, some things you can't see. But words also have frequencies. So do our fingertips. This has a different frequency to this one. So when you're doing mudras in yoga, you don't do this or that. You do certain things and it changes the way that your body behaves and the way you feel. So I was just talking in that particular uh, workshop, it was, a lot, it was a Facebook Live about manifesting because my program was about manifesting. How do you manifest? What are people actually up to when they're thinking they're manifesting? It's, you know, they were coming to me saying, look, I keep manifesting, but I just can't get it. This just doesn't work. And when I analysed, I pulled apart the words that they were saying to themselves, it's kind of in the realm of affirmation, but more like underneath it is the belief because what you get is what you believe, not so much what you purport to, to believe, but what you really do believe. Mm -hmm. And it comes out in your words and people can feel it and you can hear it in yourself. So it was a bit of an experience of keeping yourself in check with how you think and what experience it brings out in you. So that particular person in that workshop, maybe we should use that one because it's sort of straightforward, um, had been experiencing a breakdown in a relationship for many years, then they'd separated. And, and the partner, who was the woman, said, uh, the person that came to me is a man, and the woman, the ex-partner, he was saying, I really don't want to have her in my life anymore. Like, I don't want her in my, in my life any more than is necessary. I'm like, okay, so is that what you're manifesting? And he said, yes. And I said, well, let's have a look at that. Let's pull it apart. Because I think that what you're actually giving out as a frequency of words is that you do want her in your life more than necessary because the word here let me show you yeah this is the bit that really is something, my brain. Here's something i prepared earlier right yeah. Yeah, i'm just going to face forward and then i'm going to have my okay so this is um the high vibration or low vibration of words can you see that that's perfect so yeah. the high vibration High vibration words are like, I am, I believe, I can, I do, I will, and I have, mm -hmm. okay? The low ones are the ones that start like, no, not, can't, which is, a, you know, cannot, do not, don't, uh, won't, haven't, and even want. So want is an interesting one um, because when you're saying, I want that, What's underneath that is, I don't have it, so I want it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Subtle, right? So these are the sort of things that I like to discuss with my clients when they come in and they're saying, oh, man, I really want that thing. I'm like, you know what? That is coming from I don't have it. Yeah, like a place of desperation. Yeah, it's like a, like a, like a, a consciousness of, of, of lack. Yeah, it's interesting you, you you clarifying this now because I have to say once we did once I did the the once I listened to you I then went away and started thinking about so many different sentences that I was saying and I had moments of feeling confused and not knowing whether the word was positive or negative and thinking well that's kind of positive but it could be negative and I was a bit confused so this is great that you're doing this now I'm understanding more. Okay, now I'll, I'll do it with an actual sentence and I'll write it and I'll just have my partner uh, videotape me. So <clears throat> I'll say that the sentence was, this is, say, see this line here, coming a bit closer. It's a universal frequency of manifesting is a high vibration. So I'll just say this is the vibration. This line represents yep. where yep. manifesting occurs, right? This okay. is where it's occurring over here. So I'm going to write, um, I don't want, <laughs> right? I don't want uh, her in my life, okay? You can say here morning, whatever you want to say, right? Just an example. An exclamation point. So this is the vibration of the, man of the manifesting vibration. But what happens is, is that the universal vibration is so high, as soon as there's a dense word, like a heavy word, a low vibration word, doesn't mean it's a bad word, it's not a bad word. Don't good when you tell someone to stop because they're hurting you or something like that. You can use it, but when you're manifesting, when you're thinking about what you want in the future, it's really good to, to consider this. So 
as the manifesting is happening here and don't is a very low vibration word, right? Here it is, uh, don't, there. The don't actually drops down and becomes invisible to this line. Mm -hmm. So it comes off and it drops into here, into the don'ts, won't, can'ts, okay? And what you're left with is I want her in my life. So what happens? You what do you get more of? You get more of what you don't yeah. want because you're focusing so much and, and the more passion you give it, the more passion you give that sentence with feeling, the faster it comes and the harder it comes. So you can really start to turn your mind like in this experience of all of this, um, you know, uh, stuff that's going on in the world, what have we got? We've got our mind and our mind's naturally going to want to go into a type of a survival mode. So how not to get killed, how not to do this, how not to do that. But we've got to start to think, what do I want actually? Where am I heading? What is it that I desire? And how am I going to switch my mind up so that in the moment I feel happy about having that? So when we create, we start to use other words like I am or I believe something. I can, I do, I will, and I have. Mm -hmm. And all of these have to be felt. So all your feelings now are super important. So if you're saying, uh, what's something that you would be manifesting now? Something like uh, a rapid recovery from this situation, right? So imagine, you, so the words to yourself is, I, have, I am recovering rapidly from this situation with abundance, grace and ease and gratitude. So feel what it is that it feels like to recover quickly from something. So imagine how you walk, how you feel, what you think about, how, what even you're wearing when you've recovered from something quickly for example. So it changes the way you move, it changes the words you say, and it changes your demeanour in the moment. Whether or not um, you believe in energy manifesting or anything like that, as soon as you become that, so you have to become your manifestation like it's happened now, like it's already happening, there's no doubt about it, there's a real belief, there's an I am, I will, and there's nothing going to stand in my way. I don't care how it comes, but it's coming to me with, you know, a win-win for everyone around me. That's how I think and how I behave and how I feel because manifesting is all in the feeling and then the words behind it. So if you're, because this is the, the feeling of I don't want her in my life is an upset one. It's an upset feeling. It's an angry vibration. So already you're feeling vib vibrationally angry. So who's winning? Nobody. She can't see you. You're dealing with yourself every day, not wanting her in your life, for example. So what about if you just say something else like, I accept her presence in my life and I'm peaceful about it within myself. And you say, oh, wow, I accept her presence in my life. I'm going to be around. We've got a kid exactly. together, for example. Right? Yeah, so that's also how you come at something is going to give you your current, present, real-time experience and I was uh, speaking about this with one of my clients as I was massaging her we we're talking about this and she said I saw that thing on Facebook and you know I really want a, a, a car and I said oh okay well let's uh, actually just create the car in your mind in your experience as a feeling and take away the word I really want but just say I'm really grateful I, mean, I feel amazing when I'm in my car and she started to feel what it was like to have this car that she was creating in her mind and, she, and as I was massaging her she kind of softened she goes you know I feel really happy right now I said well there you go what more what more can you say it's like in the real time you're creating joy for yourself so mm -hmm. let's just do it more often and get really good at it practice it you know keep ourselves in line with our own thoughts because they're going to go off in all sorts of directions and it's normal it's not bad it's just something that we have to keep an eye on so that we don't have this dread of an experience no matter what's going on around us you can always control how you feel about something and how you think about something 
Yeah, I think I think right now it's really important for people in the world, especially. I mean, I know that the, the whole world is is really suffering right now, but I think mm. certainly in Spain um, and and Italy and 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 now the UK and and America, where we're really seeing a lot of uh, well, we're going through a lot of stress and a lot of lot of uh, people dying and and you know the news isn't always good. I think it it takes courage to actually find that within yourself to actually start the day or you know every day by thinking okay i'm grateful for what i have you know i it's, I, it's interesting how like when when i started thinking about this you have to really think about it because you really what i realized was i was not meaning at all to be negative but then i realized that the words that i was saying because there were things that i was really trying to manifest and then I realized it was just that one word that was making it all change. Yeah, shifting the vibration. Yeah. So, oh, well, that's, yeah. I think it's a really lovely message. And it, it, does, it does take courage. Yeah, it does take courage because it, you, it, what it takes, and con consciousness. Because especially consciousness. When, it takes consciousness. Especially, especially when you're in a in a in a, a, a time of, of fear and, and anxiety and and un, I mean we're really in a space of of un, an unknown space right now. So to manifest a new reality of where we're going without having because normally we can kind of, as I said to some people the other day, you know, like I'm a real map person. I need to know where I'm going and I make my map and then I actually go for it and like when your map all of a sudden is just cut off and you're looking at it going, oh my God, you know, like right now, I don't, it, ta it takes some, some courage to actually then, and some consciousness to say, okay, well, what does this new map look like? Where am I going next? And then how do I, how do I manifest that? And uh, so I think giving some tools to people is a really beautiful way for us to actually all together as a collective help to manifest a beautiful new world for us. Flip this around. It's back in my kitchen. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it's very easy to get get caught up in everything, even though you might be well and and everything like. But people around you are not, because it's easy to get caught up in the whole frequency and vibration of of the fear. So the more people that we have not getting caught up in it still being mindful of course you know you wear your gloves and all of that stuff that people are recommended to do you do that but on the inside to stay as high vibrational as you can is really important because it's going to help control your stress levels your cortisol levels your immune system yeah because when you've got high stress high cortisol your immune system gets depressed yeah. and then you're more susceptible to anything doesn't matter what it is it could be just a you know um uh, just the common cold usually it's going to be right so why why would we put ourselves into that loophole if we can see that we can pull ourselves out of it exactly. so even exactly. simple you know um, practices like gratitude like wow I'm really grateful I have somewhere to be locked down into I have a house or I have someone next to me or I have my connections online and just think about other things just take your mind off it and give yourself a break because there's certain things that um, are going to be uh, environmentally controlled for us at the moment from the government, from other sources, but we always have control of our mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to spend this with us. We really appreciate it. And we hope everyone at home who, uh, who's watching us really enjoys it as well. So and I'm sure that diagram is going to affect more people than, than you realise. Yeah. Because it just, it, for me, when, as soon yeah. as I saw the diagram... As soon as I saw the drop, I was like, oh, okay. oh, okay. I'm 43 years old and I've just never thought about that vibrational drop. Yeah. And my sister has always been saying to me my whole life, what, and, and Mandy as well, the things you're saying, listen to what you're saying, Natalia. Listen to that word that you've just said. And I've always just been a bit like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then, and then I saw it and I was like, no. We're all we're all responsible for what we're saying. Exactly. Mm. Well, very powerful the words, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and we'll be in touch. We'll stay in touch and and take care of yourself. And have a good of, e have a good evening. Yeah, lots of love. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, lots, lots of love, love to everyone in Spain. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.